In this video, I'm going to talk about how to paint your model's weapon to look corroded. Now, as it turns out, it's frequently much more difficult to paint something to look grungy and corroded. It's more difficult to do that than it is to paint it to look clean and new. And that's because you have to put a lot more pigment onto whatever the thing is. Some people have a tendency to just paint everything to look a little dirty and grungy due to their style. I'm one of those people, but that's fine. Um, a lot of people paint clean and smooth all the time, and they find it actually difficult to make something look like it's been, you know, buried underground for a while uh, or, you know, in the bottom of a river. So I'm going to do a quick and easy little thing to kind of tell you how I do it for my tabletop quality stuff. So the first thing, of course, is the actual surface of this model. If the model is already all pitted and corroded, like if it's, let's say, a Nurgle uh, sword from like a Putrid Blight King or something like that from Games Workshop, they've already made those look great and awesome with the pitting and the, the holes in them and all that kind of stuff. But if your weapon's not like that and you want it to look like that, just try a couple of different things. Uh, you can use a craft knife to scratch it up, you know, craft knife. Uh, you can use uh, an X-Acto blade, uh, you know, put the point in sometimes and twist it to get little pits and holes. You could use a Dremel tool. You could use a hot needle if you want to. You should probably make sure you don't burn yourself with a needle, just FYI. But um, if you want to try any of those things out, try them on a piece of sprue first or something or a different piece of whatever the material is that your model's made out of. Maybe it's resin, maybe it's metal, whatever. But try it on some other piece of material that's like that and see how it works out and then go from there. But having a nice beat up uh, actual weapon that part is really sort of important and it's not just paint it actually helps to have a good beat up surface on your weapon so I've done this uh, with a piece from the Putrid Blight King set because I built them but there's a lot of extra parts in there so I've done that already and so this one's already kind of pre corroded and pitted as far as the surface is concerned the first step really is just to prime it black. You don't want to prime it white. You don't want to prime it any other color. You want to prime it black because that's going to help the, the, the dinginess to some degree. Um, so here's just a quick picture of after I got done in the airbrush room, priming mine black. Once you're done with that, you want to use a dark metallic silver paint. Doesn't matter what brand, P3, um, Vallejo, Reaper, Games Workshop, whatever. But you want to use a dark silver, dark silver uh, not, a, not a, a light silver generally. That's a good thing. You slop it under. Make sure it's thinned because you do want it even to be a little bit transparent. And if you don't get it into all the absolute nooks and crannies, that's okay too because that helps to add to the kind of grunginess. Just quickly paint it and, uh, and let it dry completely before the next step. The next step is to use a wash. Now, what color wash you're going to use totally depends. It's totally up to you. Uh, the only four, three colors, really, that I would use in that situation would either be a black wash, a brown wash, or a sepia wash. Um, in this situation, I used a brown wash. Most times if I'm going to do that silver to thing, I generally go with the brown wash. It depends on what's going on in the rest of the model. Sometimes you might want to stick with a cooler colored blade, but in my mind, just using a black wash just looks like it's maybe used, you know, metal and not actually corroded and gross. So a brown, you know, the, the CP is going to send things a little bit more towards the coppery color. So in my mind, personally, brown, but your mileage may vary as far as your wash. Make sure it's a wash and not a glaze. There's a difference. The washes are much more transparent and you do want the silver and everything else to kind of shine through. So once it's dried, it's going to look like this. And you can see already we've got a very dull silver going on with a a brownish hue to it, an extra, you know, kind of filter of brown. You want to wait for that to completely dry. It's important that your wash is completely dry because if you don't let it completely dry when you go on to the next step, you're going to have problems because you'll tear the surface of the wash and you'll get strange things that even in a corroded beat up sword, you probably don't want that effect. Now's the time to add some modeling. And by modeling, I mean M-O-T-T-L-I-N-G. You want to have a modeled sort of surface to the paint as well. So what I like to do usually is take a different color of um, wash, in this case sepia, and then I just put it on my brush and I just basically tap dots of the sepia wash onto the surface of the blade, in this case, and just let it dry that way. Um, do it to both sides, take care of it that way. You could do just the same brown again. Uh, that'd be a much more subtle effect. You could go black, but in this situation, I went with the sepia and I just put dots on it, just sort of random, and just let them dry. 
So once that step's done and it's all completely dried, again, remember, completely dried, it's going to look like this. Now, I will admit at this point, it kind of looks like you've got polka dots on your blade and you don't want that, but believe me, we're going to fix that in the next step. This next step is to go back again with a brown wash and just go along the middle of the blade. Don't get any on the edges of the blade, just brown wash up and down the middle of the blade on both sides. Once that dries, that's going to help to blend those kind of polka dots for modeling, but it's also going to just give a little bit of a darker area to the middle and a little bit lighter towards the edges. Wait for that to completely dry as well. So once it's completely dried like this, you'll notice that that modeling, those polka dots, they've started to disappear, but they're not going completely. The next step at this point is getting into back into a metallic dry brushing. Now, if you're looking for a higher contrast, you're going to want to do your metallic dry brush with a real bright silver color metallic. Me personally, because I don't want it to be too contrasty, I'm going to go with a darker silver. Actually, the original darker silver I used for that first layer. And what you're going to do is you're going to use your dry brushing. You're obviously going to you know get some paint on the brush, wipe it mostly off on a piece of uh, paper towel or whatever, and then you're brushing in from the edge towards the middle. That's how you're doing it. You're not going back and forth. You're just brushing from the, the edge of the blade towards the middle on both sides so that the surface of the, the edge of the blade looks like it's been getting worn by use, slicing through, you know, heroes and, and other good people or whatever, I suppose, depending on who you are. And that's where it's going to knock off the corrosion. So you're going to see the, the bare metal through there, but then you want it to basically have that fade that goes towards the metal, the middle of the metal on the axe head, axe head, axe head sword, whatever. And pretty much for me, that's it. This is the uh, kind of final look. It, uh, it it kind of has different glints that it gets in the light as you move it around, as pretty much all metallics, you know, real metallics do. And it just comes together and looks kind of dirty and grungy, but not, you know, chunky. I don't want to go that direction. You want it to look like it's unkempt. That's a good word. So that's really what's going on here. It's the layers of different transparencies of wash and then that dry brushing again from the, the edge of the blades toward the center, not just back and forth or scrubbing it around because you don't want it to hit everywhere. You want it to hit the edges specifically because that gives the brightness of the wearing of the sword against the surfaces and the people that it's being used against. But it's not necessarily, you know, cleaning a clean sword. It's just more um, stress damage to the blade that makes the shine as opposed to the actual, you know, it's like if you go find something that's rusty and you scratch it. If you scratch it eventually, you're going to get down to bare metal. That's basically what's happening here. And that's what we're trying to make look, you know, the look happen with just a few layers of paints, mainly washes. Again, don't use glazes in these situations. You want to use washes. Washes are much more transparent. You want to use glaze, uh, you want to use washes and not glazes. Glazes are for a completely different thing. I'll probably talk about those in another video, but for this look, it's mostly washes with some simple metallics. And then um, pretty much you're ready to go. You've got yourself a nice, grungy, evil-looking sword with which to smite your foes.